Today I'm going to be showing you the complete beginner's guide to using your iPad. This in-depth beginner's guide is going to start off with me just setting up our iPad and then as the video continues we'll get into some more advanced features and tips and tricks. So if you've already set up your iPad feel free to skip ahead but by the end of this video you should have everything you need to know to be able to use your iPad like an expert into its maximum potential. So let's get started with today's video. This is the complete beginner's guide to using your iPad. Once you get your brand new iPad powered on just by holding the power button located on the top right corner of your iPad, we're gonna get our iPad all set up so we can start using it to its maximum potential. Now, of course, our iPad's gonna walk us through all of these steps uh, on its own, but I'm still just gonna quickly take you through the setup process just in case there's any confusion. So on that welcome screen, just swipe up using your finger, and now we're just gonna select our primary language. Next, select your country or region in which you're located, and then it's gonna take us to this quick start menu. So you'll see it's a really fast process to get it set up. We're just gonna select set up manually, and then it's gonna ask you to select your Wi-Fi network. As my iPad connects to my Wi-Fi network, I just wanna point out this connect to Mac or PC option. So if you don't have access to your Wi-Fi network from this setup menu, you can use uh, your Mac or PC computer to set up your iPad since you do need a Wi-Fi connection to be able to fully set up your device. Now that we're connected to our Wi-Fi network, Apple's just quickly introducing us to this data and privacy icon, the two individuals uh, shaking hands. So whenever you see that icon appear on your display screen, that just means that Apple's trying to collect some of your personal information. So just be aware of it whenever you're on different Apple applications. So we can just click continue. If you wanna learn more about this, obviously just select the learn more option, but I'm gonna click continue. And now we're gonna quickly set up our Touch ID. So Touch ID is um, a way to get into your iPad instead of using uh, a passcode. It's much quicker and more efficient, and it's actually located right on our power button on the top right corner of your screen. You'll see that it uh, indicates that by showing you on the top right corner of your display screen, Touch ID, and once set up, all you need to do is just place your finger on that power button, and it's going to read your fingerprint. So let's select continue, because you definitely want to get this set up, and all you're going to do is you're going to run your finger on this Touch ID button until you fill uh, this entire fingerprint. So I'm going to go ahead and get mine set up now. I suggest you do the same and then we'll meet you on the next page. Now that that's set up, we can move on to the next page. But first, I just want to let you know that in the settings application, and I'll show you this later, we can actually set up multiple fingerprints uh, for your Touch ID to pick up on. So if you want to get one of your fingers on both your right and left hand, you can do that. Or if you're going to be sharing your iPad with somebody else in your household, you may want to set up multiple fingerprints. All right, but now we can go to click continue. Oh, see it says it right here, you can add another fingerprint. So if you wanna do that now, by all means, go ahead. But I'm just gonna uh, select set up later in settings. Now we're gonna create a passcode for our device. So you'll see right here, there's this passcode options button. When selected, you'll see you have the option of doing something other than this six digit passcode. So if you wanna just do a four digit, a custom numeric code, or um, the custom alphanumeric code, you can select that by clicking passcode options. I'm gonna do a four digit numeric code because I find that quicker, but if you want more uh, security, obviously uh, you can select a longer, uh, more in depth option. Now that that's set up, uh, you're gonna need to use that passcode anytime you restart your iPad. Uh, it will disable temporarily your uh, touch ID, so that's why we have that passcode set up. Now we're gonna wanna transfer any apps and data to this iPad. So you have a few options here. Uh, if you wanna move data from an Android device, if this is one of your first Apple devices, you'll select that uh, fourth option. You can obviously transfer directly from an older iPad, Mac or PC, or simply use your iCloud to do an iCloud backup. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna do this later, but I suggest you go ahead and sync all that data now, just so you don't need to worry about doing it later. Now we're gonna enter our Apple ID. This is really important because it's how we're gonna be able to use the iCloud, the App Store, and so many other Apple services. So obviously if you already have an Apple ID, just quickly go ahead 
and sign in. But if you don't have one, it's really important you go ahead and get that set up now because if you want to be able to use your iPad to its maximum potential, you're going to need one. So just select uh, forgot password or don't have an Apple ID and they'll quickly walk you through the process of getting one all set up. By now we've gone through the most important settings on this uh, setup process. So I'm gonna quickly run through these last few. iCloud Keychain uh, keeps the, your passwords and credit card information uh, safe and secure right on your iPad. I love it, I keep it turned on, but if you don't wanna use that for whatever reason, just select don't use iCloud Keychain. On the next page uh, is Siri. We all know about Siri. It's the incredible voice assistant. I suggest and encourage you to just set that up now so you don't need to worry about it later. For the sake of the video, I'm gonna set mine up later. Um, but if you wanna set that up now, click continue and it's gonna walk you through the next steps. Here we have screen time, which is pretty self-explanatory. It's just gonna tell you how long you use your iPad for. But the great feature with screen time is for situations where if you have children or you wanna monitor monitor the amount of time somebody's uh, using their iPad for and you want to set screen limits, uh, you can use this screen time feature to accomplish just that. So I'm going to click continue or you can go ahead and set it up later in your settings if you would prefer to do that. App Analytics is requesting you to share uh, your personal app data with app developers. Uh, if you're okay with this, uh, select share with app developers. But if you don't uh, feel like sharing that information, simply select don't share. True Tone is an incredible feature, True Tone Display. And what it does is it, it constantly will adapt the brightness on your display screen uh, to be appropriate for the different ambient lighting conditions that you find yourself in. Uh, I'll show you right now what it looks like if I wasn't using this True Tone display. See, for the lighting conditions I have right now, it's not making a big impact, but it really comes in handy when you're using your iPad, say, outside on a sunny day or in a dark environment. So I'm going to leave mine on, click Continue. For appearance, we can set a default uh, lighting mode. So there's light and dark. This is what dark mode looks like. It looks really cool. Um, but what I'm going to show you later in the video to do is we can set up a schedule. So our iPad will automatically transition from light into dark mode simply based off of the time of day. So when the sun goes down, I'll show you how we can transition our iPad automatically to dark mode and then back into light mode when the sun rises the next morning. But if you prefer one of these two options, just select it and that's going to be your default appearance. And there we are, we're all set up to start using our iPad. Click get started and now we can take a deep dive into the rest of our video. Now I'm going to show you how you can fully customize your home screen and app icon layouts just to your likings. So right now I have this set up in this bigger mode, which as you can see, my app icons are larger than the default layout that your iPad is set up on when you first take it out of its box. It's filling more of my screen and it's giving more spacing between each application. This layout, which is called Bigger, is only allowing me to put 20 applications on my home screen, whereas the default uh, setting allows you to put 30 applications. From both of these layout options, we have access to this Today View, which I'm gonna talk about more in a little bit, and I'm gonna show you how you can customize this stack. But for now, I wanna show you how you can access this app icon layout uh, for your home screen. So to customize this home screen, we're gonna go into our settings application, and then select home screen and dock. So just as I said, we have two different options. We have the default option that's labeled more, and this is what that looks like. You'll see the application icons are much smaller now. Uh, it's not filling my entire screen, but it's going to allow me to add 30 applications per page on my home screen. So the other option is the one I had just had it set to. It's called bigger. And again, the only limitation is we can now only add 20 apps um, per, per page on our home screen. So once you have whichever one selected, I also want to suggest you to turn on this today view. So when uh, activated and enabled, we have access uh, to this today uh, smart stack. And to get here, we just take a finger and swipe to the right on our home screen. So now we have all of these awesome widgets uh, like our calendar, weather, news stories, maps, and so many more. And if you ever want to edit this, we're going to scroll down to the bottom, select edit, whoops, 
select edit, and now we can take away any of these just by selecting this minus button, and then you'll see it's gonna remove that screen time widget right from my stack. And if you wanna add in a new widget, at the top left corner of our display screen, just click this plus icon, and now you'll see you have access to all of these different incredible features that you can add to your stack. So we'll add uh, series suggestions, and to select that, you'll see we have a ton of different options on how you want this to appear on your stack. So I'm gonna select uh, this one, actually, we'll select this one, the largest view, which is gonna give me four different shortcut suggestions. And once I click this add button, it is now in my smart stack, and I can rearrange where it shows up on my stack just by grabbing it and then moving it accordingly to wherever I would like it to go. Again, if you wanna take away anything from this stack, we're just gonna click the minus icon and then select remove. Now, anytime you wanna leave the smart stack, you of course just swipe over to the left and when you wanna go back to that stack, we'll swipe over uh, to the right. Back into our settings, the last thing I wanna show you is this multitasking. Um, I suggest you keep this turned on. This is how you can access that multitasking mode that we showed you earlier. By default, it will be on, but if you ever wanna shut it off, of course, you can go in here and then just disable these. And then the last thing is that I also suggest you have enabled is show suggested in recent apps in dock. So that's this toolbar right here. Again, you can access it when you're inside an application just by pulling up on it. But what this specific setting is talking about is the apps that show up on the right side of this toolbar or dock. So these three apps are either going to be your recently used applications or apps that Siri is suggesting that you use. So if your iPad picks up on you using, say your stocks app uh, rather frequently, it's going to suggest that application for you. So these apps on the right side of this line here are gonna be constantly changing and they're going to be recently used and suggested applications. I love that feature. If you wanna have it turned on, just leave this show suggested in recent apps and dock settings enabled. And of course, if you don't want that to happen, just select it and disable that setting. Everyone knows Apple Maps is great for driving directions, but what you may have not known is how much more it can do for certain popular locations, such as an airport. So if you go to Logan International Airport, yeah, you can get the driving directions there, but once you're inside, there's still so many great features on Apple Maps that you can still use. For example, you can check out all the different gates at your airport and then get walking directions to that gate. You're looking for a bathroom in the airport. You can search for restrooms, find out where all of the restrooms are in that airport. The same applies for the different food vendors they have, drinks, terminals, bag claim areas, as well as the different check-in areas. So any popular location like this, you'll be able to find these extra walking directions inside. Now for any of these, say gates, next time you're at the airport, pull out your boarding pass, find your gate, select it, now, if you hold down on that gate number right there, we can get the directions uh, to the walking directions to that location, but also we can share our location with somebody. So say you're trying to meet somebody at a busy place like the airport, you know, find a gate and then click share location. Now both of you can get walking directions to that location. I want to take a quick break to invite you to join AppFind VIP, our email newsletter where we're sending out the best mobile apps and mobile games to be sent directly to your email inbox. Now, either use the link in the description or go to appfindvip.com, and once you're entered on our email list, you're automatically going to be entered into AppFind giveaways, where we're giving out incredible gifts like iTunes gift cards and Google Play gift cards every single month. All you need to do is join our free email newsletter on appfindvip.com and you'll automatically be entered into our monthly giveaways. We can't wait to see you inside. Go to appfindvip.com or use the link in the description to join AppFind VIP today. This next feature is on Apple Music. A lot of people already know about it, but I still just wanted to go over it just in case you don't, because it is a great shortcut and will help you find new music. So say you are listening to a song. The artist's name right beneath the song's name is actually clickable. And when you click that, you have the option to go directly to that artist, 
or to the album. Again, it's a quick one. I just wanted to go over it just in case you didn't know. Anytime you're listening to any song, click the artist's name, uh, then you can get transported to the artist or to the album. One of the first things I encourage you to get set up right when you get your brand new iPad is the display settings. So I'm going to show you my favorite way uh, to configure these display and brightness settings. So to do this, we're going to open up our settings application. Then we're going to go to display and brightness. And then first off, we're going to uh, set up our iPad's appearance. So we have this standard uh, light mode, which you see here. And then we also have the option to enable dark mode. This is what dark the dark theme uh, looks like. You see it's really cool. I like it especially at nighttime. It's going to change all of the different apps appearances. Everything is going to be themed around this dark mode when enabled. And then again, when you're in light mode, that will be the standard setting. So if you prefer one of these appearances over the others, you can simply select it and that will be your default appearance. However, I want to show you how you can set this up so your iPad automatically transitions between light and dark mode based off of the sun, uh, your sunrise and sunset in your specific time zone. So if you wanna set up this automatic transition, we're gonna turn on this automatic, and then under options, select sunset to sunrise. So again, when the sun sets in your given time zone, it's gonna automatically put your iPad into this dark mode. When the sun rises the next morning, automatically you'll go back into light mode. So if you wanna have it set up that way, just select sunset to sunrise and automatically your iPad will be transitioning between these two appearances. The next setting I wanna encourage you to turn on is True Tone. So True Tone is gonna automatically adapt your iPad's uh, brightness settings based off of the different ambient lighting conditions you find yourself in. This is especially useful if you're using your iPad outside on a sunny day or whenever you're in a dark lighting situation because it's automatically gonna adjust your iPad's brightness and you won't need to worry about constantly adjusting uh, the brightness based off of the lighting conditions you find yourself in. So just simply toggle that to on and you'll be all set so you can start using True Tone. The last display feature I wanna point out and just encourage you to get set up right away is this auto lock. So all auto lock does is it dictates the amount of time it's gonna take your iPad to fall asleep and go back to that lock screen. The reason why I think it's important that you extend this to maybe five minutes is just because if you do a lot of reading on your iPad, it can get really frustrating uh, given how big the display screen is. Uh, if you're maybe reading for the entire two minutes and your you know, iPad continuously falls asleep, it can get pretty frustrating. So if you know that you're gonna be you know, staring at your iPad for an extended amount of time without actively touching the display screen, I suggest you go in here and extend this auto lock period. So once you have that set, whatever you leave it on is going to remain as your default setting until you go back into these display settings and change it again. I want to take a quick break from our video to show you the incredible application Rakuten. With Rakuten, you're going to start earning real cash back just for shopping at your favorite stores. And not only can you start earning real cash back today, if you use our exclusive link, you're going to also earn an additional $20 cash just for using our link and signing up for Rakuten. So to claim this $20 and start earning real cash back for shopping at your favorite stores, we're going to go to bit.ly slash get ebates bonus. Now this link is also going to be found in our description, but again, it is bit.ly slash G E T E B A T E S B O N U S. Now you do need to use this exclusive link to get the $20 because we have partnered with Rakuten to get you the best exclusive deals, just like this additional $20 cash. Now this also helps support our channel. So we do appreciate you using this link, but you're also going to earn this free $20 plus, plus other additional exclusive cash back deals that you'll find inside the app. So once you go to bit.ly slash get ebates bonus, you'll see all you need to do is enter your email password, or you can easily link your Google, Facebook, or Apple account. Now it's completely free to sign up. And once you join and spend your first $20 on any of your favorite stores, you'll get this additional $20 cash bonus. So I want to show you inside the Rakuten application. 
So you'll see right away that there are just a ton of different stores giving you real cash back just for doing your typical shopping habits. For example, at Forever 21, they're giving you a 20% cash back. Finish Line, you can get 9% cash back. At Adidas, 6% cash back. Now the application's incredible, super easy to use. They even will separate their deals based off of categories. So you can see, they range all the way from home decor and furniture to clothing, even food and restaurants. You can start earning real cash back just by using this incredible application. Now if we go inside, say, uh, travel and vacations, let's see what deals they have going on today. So if you use Verbo, the incredibly popular company Verbo, you'll get an additional $10 cash back just for having your Rakuten account linked. Expedia, you can get up to 3.5% cash back, 2.5% cash back from turnkey vacation rentals. As you can see, there's just so many options and you're really just losing out on money if you're not using Rakuten. It's completely free to sign up and you're gonna get an additional $20 cash bonus just for using our link, which again is bit.ly slash get ebates bonus, or you can just go down to the link in our description and get signed up today. Is there a certain website that you spend a lot of time on? If so, I'm gonna show you how you can actually save that to your home screen, just like an application. So once you're on a website that you wanna store on your home screen, we're just gonna press this button right here, open that menu up, then scroll down to where you find add to home screen. All we need to do is press that, click this add button, and now check this out. We now have that website stored right on our home screen, just like an application. Now anytime you open that up, it's gonna transport you right to that exact URL. I wanna take a quick break from our video to invite you to join this incredible application that's giving out millions of cash prizes just for answering quick and easy surveys. So if you wanna start earning real cash today just by taking these simple surveys, use the link in our, in our description or go to bit.ly slash getquickthoughts. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash G-E-T-Q-U-I-C-K-T-H-O-U-G-H-T-S. Now, using this link is going to help support our channel, but more importantly, it's going to make sure that you get access to their best surveys that pay out the greatest rewards. Now, using that link is going to take you directly to the App Store, and if you look down here, you can see just some examples of the incredible, easy and simple surveys that are paying out real cash rewards. So go ahead, download Quick Thoughts, and then on the bottom left corner, click Sign Up, and it's a really fast and easy process to get signed up for Quick Thoughts, and then right away, you're going to be able to start answering these surveys and being rewarded with real cash rewards. So again, the link's down in the description, or go to bit.ly slash getquickthoughts to start earning real cash for taking easy surveys today. Next, we have some really cool gestures for the Safari application. So anytime you wanna check out all the tabs that you have running, you're gonna take three fingers and just pinch inwards anywhere on the screen. And it's gonna take you to this view here where you can close out of any running tabs. Um, but when you wanna get back into, into the tabs, all you'll do is you'll pinch outwards. And you'll see it takes me right back inside. But what's important to note is to choose which tab you want to be taken to, it just is up to where you make that outward pinch. So if I want to go to the weather tab that I have open, I'm going to do the outward pinch right beneath that tab, and you'll see it will take me right to the weather page. If I want to go to App Find VIP, I'm going to do that outward pinch right beneath App Find VIPs tab, and of course, the same goes for the middle tab, Survey Junkie. If I do that outward pinch here, of course, I'm transported right there. It's a great gesture to know about and it is just an efficient way to check out uh, what you have open. And of course, if you do wanna get rid of any of these tabs and close them out, just click that X right there. Now I'm gonna show you a quick trick that will allow you to get the most out of your Apple Maps application.
So anytime you're looking at any location, I'm sure you've noticed that on the bottom right corner of the application is a little weather icon that gives you the temperature at that location. What you may have not known is you can actually press and hold down on this icon and it's going to reveal the entire weather forecast. What's really cool about this is if you switch the location and you look somewhere else, say Yellowstone, it's automatically going to update that weather icon, allowing you to check out that uh, weather forecast for that given location. This next hidden feature is an incredible shortcut for iMessages. So if you're ever sending text messages on your iPad and you wanna resend an old text message, rather than retyping out that same message, you can actually just grab it, drag it into your text box, and it's automatically going to paste that old message. So let me show you what I mean. Again, we're just gonna grab this text here, and you'll see you can just pull it over and drop it right in the text box like that. It repasted that exact same text. I can go ahead, click send, and not have to type that message out again. Now this is really cool because it doesn't just work for these texts. You can also do this with images and videos. It's super useful. Again, you just grab it, drag it over to that text box, and it's going to paste the exact message, whether it's a text message, a video, or a photo. If you didn't already know, you can access your control center at any point just by taking one finger and swiping downwards from the top right corner of your display screen. Now what this control center is, is it's an awesome drop down menu that gives you quick and easy access to a lot of great features. Now by default, the options that we have set up on this control center are a bit limited. So I wanna take the time to show you how we can customize this control center so you can get all of your favorite features added to this quick and easy drop down menu. So to do this, we're gonna leave the control center and then go into our actual settings application. Then once inside, select this tab labeled Control Center. From here, it's really easy. If you wanna take away any applications, just select this minus button, and then you'll select Remove, and it will take it out of your Control Center. But now if you scroll down, you'll see we have all of these different options that we can add into our Control Center. So for any ones you wanna add, say Alarm, uh, maybe this QR code scanner, Dark Mode, Guided Access, Maybe you wanna have this Shazam music recognition feature. For any of the ones that you wanna add, just select that plus icon and it will move up and be immediately accessible in your control center. Now, not only can we customize which features go into our control center, but we can also rearrange them so you have most efficient access to your top or favorite features. So to rearrange these, we'll just select these three lines on the right side of any of these features, and that will grab that specific feature, and then you can move it down or move it upwards on your control center, and it's gonna automatically place that feature accordingly in your control center. So now that we've customized this control center, let's leave our settings application and take a look at what it looks like now. You'll see now it's a lot larger and I could actually fill my control center all the way down to the bottom if you wanna add in, say, all of these different features. And I'll show you what that looks like now. So now that I have all of them added, my control center is a lot larger, giving me access to all of these different features. But I suggest you just go in, customize it, and only add your favorite ones, and take, a one, take away the modes that you don't think that you'll be using as much. So again, you just go to your settings application, then control center, and then click the plus icon on any feature you wanna add, and the minus icon on any feature you wanna take away. That concludes today's video. This was the complete beginner's guide to using your iPad to its maximum potential. These in-depth beginner guides do take us a long time to produce, and we'd really appreciate a like if you did find this video valuable. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite part of this video was, and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more great content coming out soon. Thank you so much for tuning in to our complete beginner's guide on how to use your iPad, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.